The 2023 MLB All-Star Game rosters have been announced, and let's just say there are a few very notable names that somehow did not make the roster. Of course, part of the reason is because there needs to be one player from every single team in the game, so some guys who don't necessarily deserve it take up a spot from a guy that should. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the biggest snubs from the 2023 MLB All-Star Game. I'm not going to be able to cover every single one. That video could take forever, so I'm limiting it to 12, but I promise you these are 12 of the biggest snubs in my opinion. Enough talking. Let's get going into the snubs. For the first snub in today's video, let's talk about Spencer Steer, who got snubbed out of first base, third base, even outfield. He's like a utility player, and he's having a phenomenal year for the Cincinnati Reds. In 81 games, has 14 homers, 19 doubles, 2 triples, and 50 RBIs, with 9 stolen bases, hitting 283 with a 374 on base, 502 slugging, 876 OPS, for an OPS plus at 129. That's higher than Pete Alonso at first base for the Mets. That's higher than Austin Riley at third base for the Braves. Spencer Steer is just low-key having a really good season for the the Reds, one of the reasons why they're in first place. He's top 25 in Major League Baseball among qualified hitters in WRC Plus at 131. He's got the fourth highest OPS among Major League first basemen, and he's just absolutely mashed this year for the Reds. Completely deserves to be on this team. I was pretty shocked. I thought the Reds would get maybe one or two more picks here, but Spencer Steer getting left off, to me, is one of the biggest ones. Next up, we've got a pitcher for the San Diego Padres. That's going to be Michael Waka. While Michael Waka might not have the greatest strikeout numbers, he's not the most exciting pitcher pitcher to watch. Waka has had a fantastic year with the Padres, building off a strong 2022 with the Red Sox. So far in 15 appearances this year, Waka has a 2.84 ERA, a whip at 1.074, striking out just over 20% of the batters he's faced. He has a top 10 ERA in all of Major League Baseball. He's just been one of the best pitchers in the National League this season. I know the Padres aren't good, but Michael Waka has been great. And since the month of May, Michael Waka has not allowed more than two earned runs in a single start. His last 10, two earned runs or less. He's just been one of the better pitchers in baseball over the majority of the season. Definitely deserves to be on the team. Keeping out West, this time on the American League side, Ezekiel Duran of the Texas Rangers completely deserves to be on the All-Star team. Now, I know it did get a little bit crowded because there's a lot of good players, but Ezekiel Duran 100% deserved a spot over Whit Merrifield. Or even some of the other guys. I mean, listen to the numbers that Duran has put up this year. In 65 games, he has 12 homers, 14 doubles, 34 RBIs, hitting 308 with a 349 on base, 537 slugging an 886 OPS. Among players that have 240 or more plate appearances this year, Ezekiel Duran is 17th in WRC plus at 143. He has the 14th highest OPS in Major League Baseball among that same sample at 886. And he's been able to play a variety of different positions this year, including shortstop, left field, second base, third base, first base, and right field. He's a jack of all trades. He's a great utility player. And he's been really, really good for what has been one of the best teams in baseball. I think Ezekiel Duran got snubbed. Quite possibly one of the biggest snubs of the entire video can Tell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks somehow got no love. The Diamondbacks are having one of the best seasons in Major League Baseball, and a big reason is because of Cattell Marte. We're in 79 games this year, has 15 homers, 13 doubles, 4 triples, and 44 RBIs, hitting 285 with a 365 on base, 502 slugging, and an 867 OPS. He's rocking a 3.6 baseball reference war, which is up there with some of the best players in the league, and his numbers are just straight up better than some of the guys that are on this roster. So for him to be left off this team just really makes absolutely no sense to me. A one 33 WRC plus the dude is a stud. I can't wrap my head around this one, but how does Masataka Yoshida not make the all-star team? Yoshida's having an unbelievably good rookie season with the Boston Red Sox, hitting 305 with a 377 on base, 477 slugging, and a WRC plus at 133, which is the sixth highest among outfielders in the American League. He has a super low K rate at 11.2% and a pretty good walk rate at 8.6. Yeah, he's like not really playing the field that well or that great, but at the plate, I mean, he's just been one of the better hitters offensively in terms of outfielders in the American League. I love J-Rod as much as the next guy, but Yoshida deserves a spot over him for sure. How about a little love for Baltimore Orioles starting pitcher Tyler Wells? Tyler Wells, low-key having a really good season. He also has the lowest whip in Major League Baseball at .885. I don't know how you leave this guy off. It doesn't make any sense on the pitching side. 16 appearances, 15 starts, a 3.21 ERA, and 92 and two-thirds innings pitch. Like I said, that Major League low whip at .885 is just absolutely disgusting. 26.5% strikeout rate, 5.6% walk rate, and he's just, again, been one of the huge reasons why the Baltimore Orioles have been so successful. So I'm not sure how a guy like Tyler Wells got left off. I'm sure it has to do with the rules where one player from every team has to be on there, but hopefully in a couple days when the guys are starting to back out because of pitching matchups, Tyler Wells gets put in because he fully deserves it. Speaking of a player that fully deserves it, how did Dave Bednar not 
make the all-star team for the Pirates. Bednar has the seventh lowest ERA amongst relief pitchers in Major League Baseball. He has the second lowest in the National League, only behind Josh Hader. He's rocking a 1.72 FIP as well, which is absolutely disgusting. He has 16 saves on the year too, so it's not like he's not getting saves. And Bednar is rocking a nasty 30.3% K rate with only a 3.3% walk rate to give him the eighth best K to walk ratio in all of Major League Baseball. He's got a whip under one. I mean, I just, I can't wrap my head around how Dave Bednar gets left off this list. He's one of the best relievers in the league. Back to the hitters we go. We got a couple outfielders coming up here. First, I want to talk about Lane Thomas of the Washington Nationals. Now, Josiah Gray got the lone pick for the Nationals, but I honestly think it could have been Lane Thomas and probably should have been. He could have even been their second choice. He's just straight up better than Lourdes Gurriel this year. I don't know how he got left off. Talk about a breakout season for Lane Thomas. So far in 81 games, 14 homers, 21 doubles, 44 RBIs with a 299 average, 348 on base, 506 slugging in the 854 OPS. He has a 129 WRC plus. He's having a career season. I know the Nationals are not very good, but someone like Lane Thomas, who's hitting 300, playing as well as he is for as bad of a team as he's on, I feel like he deserved to get into this All-Star game. He's having a really good year. How does Fernando Tatis Jr. not make the All-Star team? I'm sure it has something to do with the steroids. I have a feeling that like somehow, some way, they were like, we don't want this guy in there. But in 64 games, he's having one of the better seasons in the league. In those 64 games, Tatis has 16 homers, 18 doubles, 41 RBIs, and 14 stolen bases, hitting 280 with a 341 on base, 526 slugging, 867 OPS for an OPS plus at 140. Among National League outfielders, he's fifth in WRC+. Plus. This is all while learning a new position that he doesn't play. 3.2 war, which is top five among National League outfielders as well. There's actually no conceivable way that Fernando Tatis Jr. did not make the All-Star team. This is a game for the fans to see the biggest stars play. Fernando Tatis has the numbers, is one of the biggest stars in baseball, and is one of the most exciting players in the league. Bad job by Major League Baseball not getting him in right now. Another huge miss on the All-Star team is Paul Goldschmidt. I don't know how Paul Goldschmidt didn't make it. I know the Cardinals are having a bad year, so you don't want to reward them. I mean, the guy won the MVP last season, and he's having another phenomenal year. Goldschmidt's hitting 286 with a 375 on base, 492 slugging, and an 867 OPS. 15 homers, 20 doubles, 46 RBIs with 8 stolen bases. He's got the second highest F4 among first basemen in all of Major League Baseball at 2.8, only behind Freddie Freeman. He's got a comparable WRC plus to Matt Olson, higher than Pete Alonso. He has a higher OPS than Pete Alonso. I mean, there's just no way that Paul Goldschmidt shouldn't be on this team. How do you leave last year's MVP, who's having another great year, off this team? I just don't get it. The Tampa Bay Rays have been so good this year, and one of the reasons is because Zach Eflin has been one of the more dominant pitchers in the American League. In 15 starts, 90 and a third innings, Zach Eflin has a 3.29 ERA with a whip at 1.030, striking out 25% of the batters he faces, walking under 5%, 4.2. Similarly to Tyler Wells, like his team's playing well, so I don't know why he isn't getting any love. He's top 10 in a war among starting pitchers in the American League. He's the fifth lowest fifth in the league behind Kevin Gosman, Sonny Gray, Framber Valdez, and Nathan Ivaldi. He's got the fifth best K to walk ratio at 21.3%, and the Rays are one of the best teams in baseball. I feel like Zach Eflin very much deserves to be on this all-star team. Again, gets bumped off because one player from every team needs to be on here, but expand the rosters. Zach Eflin should be one of the first picks. I want to throw another Texas Ranger on here because I feel like this dude is going under the radar. Leone Tavares is having a really, really good season with the Texas Rangers, and I feel like he's not getting any love. He's hitting 306 with a 353 on base, 494 slugging, and the ninth highest WRC plus in the American League at 134. He's playing a good outfield as well. 2.3 war, which puts him in the top 15 amongst American League players. 10 homers, 39 RBIs. I mean, just overall, Leone Tavares is having a good year, and I think you could make an argument that he deserves to be on this All-Star team over some other players. Last but certainly not least, of course, I had to put my boy Brandon Nimmo in there. Of course, I'm going to put a Mets guy. He deserves it, though. He's been so good. If Lourdes Gurriel is getting on there with worse numbers. I mean, Brandon Nimmo, who plays center field and has a better season, completely deserves to be there. Nimmo on the year while playing gold glove caliber defense in center. 12 homers, 13 doubles, 4 triples with 40 RBIs, hitting 279 with a 372 on base, 458 slugging, 830 OPS. Quite literally has a better slash line than Lourdes Gurriel in a much less hitter-friendly park and also plays center field with great defense. Brandon Nimmo deserves to be on the all-star team. He's having a career season. Just one of the most underrated players in the league, again. So there they are, the biggest snubs of the 2023 MLB All-Star Game. I'd love to know who you think was the biggest snub down in the comment section below. Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel. It really does help support what I'm doing. Follow me on all my social media, at GiraffeNeckMark. Links are in the description. And that's where I'll wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.